So good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I'm joined by Kimberly Ramsey and Kimberly and I actually met in EO many years ago. She's the co-founder of Vidzing, which is a new technology company. It actually um, it started in February 2021. It got its first employee in April and it's now up to 10 employees and just launched last week. And the, the, the concept behind Vidzing is it's basically like a YouTube channel where you can actually stream your content behind a payment gateway, which means you can set up your own YouTube channel and actually stream your content with people paying to view that content. And Kimberly will tell us more about why she came up with that idea, because her original business was actually around cheerleading. Is that right, Kimberly? Yeah. Hi. Hi, Hi. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited to be on your podcast. Oh, um, it's great, great to have you here. Yeah. <laughs> tell us a bit yeah, about so- your background. Yeah, so I'm actually a tax lawyer by trade, a tax lawyer and an accountant, Uh, realized that wasn't my passion and decided to start a a business um, called cheerleading. So I actually started the sport of cheerleading in New Zealand, and that's that's been going now for almost 19 years. So uh, we're a cheerleading company. We teach kids cheerleading classes. We run cheerleading and dance events and apparel. Um, And then over COVID, like everybody, we got um, stuck in that virtual world of Zoom classes and then running events over live stream. And when we were trying to live stream our events, we realized that actually there was nothing that existed to let us live stream and get paid. Um, live streaming is easy. You can live stream on Facebook or YouTube, but actually getting paid for that content is hard. Um, likewise, selling, likewise, giving away your content on YouTube is easy, but it was the payment gateway that we found really difficult. And so we decided to pivot and start a tech wow. company. And that is a huge pivot, so, but um, really interested to sort of find out because you I didn't realize you were a tax lawyer, actually. That's really fascinating. So a tax lawyer come cheerleader who decides to get into technology. I'm assuming you don't have much of a background in technology. Oh, zero. Um, yeah. So, yeah, when you think about it, I actually have done some pretty big pivots from tax law at Bell Gully to cheerleading. And again, I knew nothing about cheerleading when I started that too. So, um, no, I knew nothing about tech. Uh, We did go to a company to build it for us and then I didn't think they were the right fit. So um, my son had just finished a computer science degree. I went, oh, let's screw it actually. Let's just do it ourselves. And so that's what we did. So knowing nothing, we took the first month we started yeah, start of February and uh, YouTube a whole lot of stuff. We listened or read a lot of books on tech. Um, look, I didn't even know what my first employee needed to be or where where to start. So, uh, but you know, with all with Google and everything, you can learn anything. So I was like, well, we'll just figure it out, and, and we did. So it's very cool. <laughs> Fantastic. And when we talked just before the podcast, you were saying to me that you actually um, approached somebody from TVNZ to get some help. Tell me about that. Yeah, so on my journey, uh, listening, I, I, Audible, if, if you don't know it, get Audible. I, I do 10 books a month um, on Audible while I'm driving, on the shower or whenever whenever I can. Um, a lot of those books are talking about content and how to acquire content. And I was like, holy crap, I don't even know what content is in the scheme of what we were trying to do. Yeah. So I went onto LinkedIn and put in content acquisition person New Zealand. And it just happened that um, the top, content acquiring person for TVNZ um, was on there. She had been um, furloughed or let go during the lockdown, as had quite a few TVNZ people. So I called her and said, hey, look, I'm starting this tech platform. Can you just talk to me about content? And she was like, uh, okay, that's weird, but um, sure. And she goes, I don't know what I can add. I, I said, look, just could you just come and sit with me? I'm just going to ask you questions. I need to learn everything I can about content and um, broadcasting and TV and, you know, and channels and, and everything. And she was amazing. Um, and um, and she shared all of her knowledge and put me in touch with some other really cool TVNZ people. And like I sold them on the vision and bought them on my journey. And now we have some of the best media people from New Zealand. Um, working, uh, you know, on this little startup called Vidzing, you know, crazy mother and son team. So excellent. And so, I mean, it's not been a long time, but between February and now, I mean, there's been a few, um, should we call them speed bumps along the way, hasn't there? I mean, there's been a, a another lockdown. There's been a whole range of things going on. What are some of the challenges that you faced in that time? Well, look, I mean, our first challenge was um, finding the right technology, piecing it together, and look 
our, our vision was to create a platform for people to sell video content. And if we were thinking it, we wouldn't be the first. So we're obviously in this huge rush to market. Um, speed's going to be the name of the game. There's a huge mindset shift now with people because of COVID. So everyone now is thinking um, more virtually and, and everyone's a lot more open to doing, you know, Zooms and um, learning virtually and attending conferences virtually. So we knew that there was a mindset shift happening and we needed to be a part of it and fast so um, getting people on board I think because you know we there's a huge tech shortage of people in New Zealand um, and you the borders are closed so you can't have people come in so it's really about trying to convince or sell those first employees that you know we're the right place and a few people just said no we don't we don't get it and what are you uh, uh, don't you do cheerleading <laughs> why would I give up my you know, my the comfort of a job at Spark Sport or, um, you know, the digital strategist of ASB and come and work for, a, you know, a cheerleading mum and son. So, um, you know, we did a man we managed to do a good job and got some really cool people. Um, and then it was trying to convince people that we had a platform that would work. Um, and the NZ Opera took a took a punt on us. And when we had that first lockdown, we streamed their event and um, it all went perfectly. They they loved us and they've just been a really great advocate for us since. So the lockdowns are perfect for our for our platform. So every time we have a lockdown, you know, more people start thinking about how to live stream and, and sell virtual content. Um, not so great for the event business or the cheerleading, but um, definitely for vidzing, it's good. But you're you're using the platform for your cheerleading um, lessons and things too. Is that right? Yeah. So we use it to live stream our our competition. So a lot of people think um, is live streaming all this virtual stuff just a COVID thing. But what we've found is it's actually a whole new revenue stream. So if you were to attend a conference or if you were to attend, say, you know, the 660 concert where they offered in person and virtual, um, they're completely different experiences. So, you know, it's 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 for those people who can't be there. So what we found was we live streamed in 2020 when COVID hit. And then at the start of the year, um, our our numbers doubled uh, for the virtual attendance, even though we weren't in a lockdown. It was people from Australia or Wellington or Christchurch that wanted to attend an Auckland event, but didn't want to spend the expense of being there, but still wanted that opportunity to compete. So, you know, it basically doubled revenue. Um, and, and, and I think that's the thing, you know, there's this whole new revenue opportunity out there for people, um, you know, to sell content and I think that's the other thing as well I mean content's always been free for so long um there's a bit of a mindset a mindset shift now and people going I actually I will pay for good content so yeah no it is really interesting I know that I obviously also had to switch to doing things online and I work with entire leadership teams so getting you know six to eight to ten people in a room together online to do a video conference if you'd asked me a year ago I'd have said no way don't enjoy it much prefer face to face and to be fair I do still prefer face to face but that said I can now work with teams that are in the US or teams that are split across different locations as well so I've got one company has got a team in the US a team in Australia a team in New Zealand and I can work with all of them virtually and I've got all the set up in the workshop to do that. So I think the whole COVID thing has definitely had to change. Well, it's changed that our mindset more than just the way that we do things. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I think it has actually opened up the whole world yeah. to us. Um, and, I, and I love that, you know, so we can, um, you know, have those distributed teams as well as, you know, being able to experience things you wouldn't normally experience. So I went to that, I went to the Tech Disrupt conference that, you know, in the past is you'd have to have traveled there and it was an expense that now you can enjoy virtually. So, you know, I think it's, I think it's cool. There's a lot of good things to come out of COVID if you look at the positives. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, EOS actually does a, a conference as well. It's always in the US. And as you said, the, it's not just the expense, but it's actually the travel. It's the time loss with travel. It's the, the jet lag on all of that. Whereas now anybody from anywhere in the world can actually join in, which makes it great. And I've made some amazing friends now through, um, you know, attending overseas conferences. So I've got friends in Holland. I've got friends in the UK. I've got friends in the US. It's a lot of fun. So in terms of you talked about, you know, finding the right people, and obviously it's, it's tough in the tech industry. And you said that you sort of sold them on coming and joining you. But what did you really do? How did you make sure that you actually did get the right people? Um, that's tough. And I think it's always a bit of a punt that, you know, 
as I'm sure many many of your guests sort of said, culture fits really important. So aligning values, and um, we were really lucky that we've had people who found people. So we had a lot of recommendations. So once people um, came in and started working for us and felt the culture and, and enjoyed it, they were our best advocates to recommend other people. So. Um, I, I'm terrible. I did very few reference checks. So I was like, okay, actually, anyone who wanted to work for me, I'll take you. Kind of. <laughs> um, so we were pretty open. Uh, but yeah, value, value wise, um, made sure they were the right fit. And then also, uh, you know, we we're just kind of really honest about what our vision was and what we wanted to achieve and how we we're doing really, you know, cool and different things. And I think, um, we're we're we've kind of followed the netflix type thing which is freedom and responsibility which means that we because i know nothing about tech and in the past i've been a bit of a micromanager i'm pretty much all hands off and you know so we it's all about you know discussion and people you know leading and doing the you know a lot of autonomy and learning from people's experiences you know they have a lot more than what what we know so that's been, really interesting, I, isn't it? Because you've almost had to take a hands-off approach and not be a micromanager because it's not your forte. What's the difference? Because you've obviously, I mean, I think you and I are a little bit similar. We, we do like to keep control of things. A lot of entrepreneurs do, right? Um, so what's the difference between working in a business where you are, you know, really micromanaging and letting go? What have you seen being the differences? Oh, look, I, I feel like I'm the dumbest person in the room. So I'm obviously in the right room. That's what they say. Yeah. Um, it's It's amazing to work with people that know so much more than you do. Um, and what I think I can bring is just a different view because I'm not constrained by what technology can do. I say to the team, can we do this? And they're like, no, that's not possible. I'm like, why? Why is it not possible? Yeah. You know, because I don't come from that tech world. I think everything is possible. Um, so I think just we've got a lot of different experiences when we come to like, like the tech that what we're building is really difficult uh, and there's a lot of technical challenges so we get everyone in the room and um, having zero tech knowledge I think just brings it helps people broaden their ideas I guess you know so yeah it's, so it's cool. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. in terms of the team I mean you do you week do you meet weekly how do you keep um, how do you keep the communication up how do you make sure that you're on the same page um, so we've got a, an amazing BA who's um, a business analyst and her job is to make sure we're very organised. It's it's completely different to my other businesses. So we have a weekly, they're called sprint planning. So we have a weekly sprint planning where we put out what the objectives are for the week and then everyone gets a ticket, ticketed items of what needs to be completed by the week. Um, so that's very, very organized. And we also have an amazing product manager as well who goes, here's what we need to build for, for the team. Um, I think for me, what I've learned most is that I will just keep throwing things at the at the team and, and the staff and we'll just go, yes, and everyone's a people pleaser. It's like, yep, we'll do it all. Whereas this way we're so accountable people are like okay if you want us to do this we have to drop something else what is it that you'd like us to drop so everyone is very accountable to how they need to you know do things so we meet daily um we have a sprint planning session every week and then we also do what they call a retrospective so um we go how was the week that's been what can we do better start stop keep so um yeah i've never been in such an organized company and what's so nice is i've had zero to do with it so <laughs> fabulous it's all about having the right people around you isn't it so how do you how do you measure success like in the new company well actually talk a little bit about the cheerleading and also about the technology company how do you measure success in both of those companies um, okay, so for the tech company, it's definitely not money because we're losing money like you would believe. Uh, but success in that company is having happy customers. Um, so on Friday, we ran a quiz night for Lifeline. We raised $10,000. Um, we did something that's I don't think is really being done. So we live streamed the quiz using a platform and then Zoomed people in and then in real time, people could answer. So solving really cool things like that looks like success problem solving and coming up with a solution um, looks like success to me um, in the cheerleading um, what i love is that 
our role isn't to teach kids cheerleading, our role is to teach kids life lessons. So discipline, hard work, drive, perseverance, all of those things that you get to learn safely in a sport, um, failure, learning from mistakes. So I love that we can make great people. So that's what success looks like to me. Okay. And so I assume there are plans for the tech company to make money at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would hope so. <laughs> what, what does the future look like, do you think? Um, look, I, I'm i excited about what we're doing and I think you have to have a really big vision. So our like VHAG or 10-year goal or five-year goal is for the for our company to pay pay out content creators, um, you know, a billion dollars or $10 billion. And we, we're a commission-based company, so we add a service fee on top of everything that gets paid out. So, um, but if our content creators are successful, then our platform will be successful. So, um, yeah, we're hoping that we can help creators build their businesses and, and make lots of money so perfect and so out of interest who is your target market for that platform oh look that's a really tricky question so um and from every book i've read they've said you've got to be niche and you've got to stay in, in a lane and then expand you know like facebook and harvard and all of that um and i actually um read a book called Positioning and the lady's called April Dunford. She's amazing. Anyway, I messaged her afterwards to say, I don't know, we don't have a target market yet. Um, and we're really mushy. I don't know if that's the right word, but we're kind of going after everybody, which is what they say you shouldn't do. Um, but we don't know enough about our market yet to be able to niche. And we certainly don't want to niche down too quickly. And what my content acquisition person lady said is we don't want to just show cheerleading and we don't just want to be music because then we'll be a platform that's just music based or we're just cheerleading. And so we've, we're particularly going really wide and um, we're opening up the platform to anyone who wants to sell content. And then we're kind of choosing the right partners. And then once we understand and get more data, then we'll know who our target audience is. But ideally, um, you know, we would love people who have audiences so if you've got content that you want to sell and you've got an audience to sell it to then you'd be the right person for us yeah so that is a niche in itself I mean I, I think you're being a little bit um unfair or a bit unkind <laughs> the niche doesn't have to be it's females who are this age it's actually more about describing the demographics and it's the fact that you know people who've got an audience who've got content who want to sell that content um it in itself is actually a, a niche <laughs> oh cool okay so then that, that's our nature we're also we're also like you know we could be live stream we could be sports we could be music we could be you know one-off events and you know just yeah basically we want it like a YouTube really just you know if you've if you've got content or you would like to start a content business or you're an influencer that's tired of getting paid you know cents on the dollar um, you know at YouTube then you know come over to Vidzing bring your content and you know give it a go and try and you know sell you know sell it so so tell me Kimberly your, your role in the business now so what is it that what's your role in the in the Vidzing business? It's a really good question. Um, so uh, vision, vision. So I'm, I yeah. guess, the, the chief vision officer, if you would. So um, a lot around the product and what I think people need. I'm a huge advocate for the creator. Um, and so that, that that's big to me is making sure that like one of our values is creator first. So we'll always make sure that we're doing best by the creators. Um, and then I'm the, the sales lead person just trying to and then to get as many people on the platform so that we can learn and build what people like so tell me how your life has changed since having to make this sort of massive pivot oh um so it was actually i was up to like one or two in the morning last night doing stuff on the event business and just um we extended our bubble and it came to my mum's and um and yeah so right now i'm running four businesses so it's quite it's quite a lot so it's 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 quite full on especially over COVID. i think people i don't know for some reason i work a lot harder in a lockdown than in, in a non-lockdown there's just so much work to do yes. um but I, I, I absolutely love, adore what I'm doing and love it. It's meant I've had to get better at managing the other businesses so that I can be more full time on the tech business. So um, a lot more systems and processes in place and um, just, yeah, busier. 
but funner. I don't know. It's cool. <laughs> I enjoy what I'm doing. I, I, I enjoy the challenges that we have every day. I love working with cool people and I like building something that I think could change the world and, and, and help, you know, and help people. Yeah, and no, I can see that. I can see the passion there. It was absolutely fantastic. Hey, um, I completely forgot at the beginning of this interview to ask you about what your professional and personal best was. And I always ask my guests because I think it gives people a bit of an insight into you. So what would you say your professional and personal bests are in your life so far? Uh, professional best. Uh, so many. I think, um, look, I, starting vidzing with my son's cool. Like, who gets to do that? That's just amazing. And and then also getting other crazy people to come and work for us. <laughs> also, uh, so that that that's pretty cool. Um, and look, we're funding it ourselves as well. So the fact that I can, I think, the fact that I've had that cheerleading and the event company has been so awesome to be able to give me the lifestyle and to create wealth and value that the bank would loan me the money to run Vitzing is for me pretty cool so I guess that's probably my professional best yep. um and just yeah running really cool companies with cool people um personal best hmm personal best probably about the same i think i i think my lives are kind of entwined and i i love um i love doing business it doesn't feel like work or professional it just feels like you know so again doing that with my son's call um having three beautiful kids and um being with my husband we're coming up to 26 years so i think um i think personally having a happy home life and, and a loving family be my yeah be my fit. Tell me, does your husband work in the business at all? Oh no, that's no. not going to happen. <laughs> I love my husband to pieces, but we certainly wouldn't be together twenty six years if that was a thing. Uh, no, he's he's a happy sideline person who gives me lots and lots of really cool insights and yeah. and helps and helps. Yeah, so but no, very secret. Yeah, no, I, I I concur with that. There's different, <laughs> different people, different, you know, different horses, different courses. I know I've got a couple of friends who actually work in the business with their husband and love it, but I can't. I love my husband dearly, but I could never work with him. <laughs> I think I, I think I could work for my husband. I yeah. don't. He could work for me. So. Okay. <laughs> Hey, um, just in terms of being able to share some of the things that have been really important to you, do you have three top tips that you could share with our listeners, Kimberly? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so number one, Audible, love it to pieces. Yeah. Um, it's really easy to, you know, to devour a book in at two times speed. Yes. So, you know, like I do, like I said, I do 10 books a, a month and I, and I'm sitting in my car listening to, you know, a, a book and I, other people driving past and I just feel like I'm getting smarter. I feel a bit smug about myself going, you know, I'm learning. So, um, absolutely listen to books or read books or whatever. I was actually never a reader. So I actually like very, but once I got onto audible, it's, it's phenomenal. Um, number two, don't worry if you don't know how to do something. So I didn't know how to start a tech company and I certainly didn't wait to get the knowledge beforehand. I just jumped straight in. So um, if you're waiting for the perfect time or for the right answers or to do all the research, it's not going to happen and then it, it will change anyway. So I think just just go for it. Be okay. um, Just jump all in. I, and I think if you weigh up the risk, so I said to my husband and said, okay, we're probably, if this doesn't work, we'll lose $2 million. Are we okay with that? And I'm like, yeah, could go back and live at my mum's. I'd be okay with that. My husband wouldn't. But um, I was like, uh, if I'm okay with that, what a great learning opportunity would be. And my son would learn heaps and, you know, let, let's go for it. Um, so I think that'd be number two. And number three. But so just to be really clear that, so you knew your boundaries though, right? Because I did the same. I lost a lot of money in a business, but I knew what my boundaries were in in terms yep. of this is the bit I will cut off at and then yep, a hundred percent I'm I'm all in and I know what the, the worst thing is that could happen and I've weighed up all the risks and be okay with going this is what failure well this is what it would look like if it didn't happen yep. so yeah just a really really expensive learning university degree in technology right yes. um and then it, it's not it's not you know it's not lost and then third i think um you know you don't fail until you stop so if this doesn't work then we'll pivot and try some other tech business or something so um yeah so so just yeah keep keep learning keep pivoting yeah get stuck in something that's not working Fantastic. yeah absolutely Hey, so if people are interested in finding out more about Vidzing um, or even talking to you, uh, where will they find information? So, um, so yep, Vidzing, V-I-D, 
vidzing.tv, vidzing.tv. Fantastic. If I wanted to have a chat to you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm on Instagram under Kimberly Ramsey and or Facebook or um, again, you can find me through vidzing.tv. I answer all the emails. So yeah. <laughs> hopefully not forever. I hope it's going to be delegated <laughs> at some point. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, well, look, Kimberly, it's been really, really great to talk to you. I haven't caught up with you for a long time. So it's been lovely to see how you're going and you're just absolutely glowing. And um, it's wonderful to see you know, how excited and how passionate you are. I think it's wonderful that you're doing a business with your son. I mean, I think that is, as you said, that is just something that um, is pretty rare and pretty special so congratulations I hope it all goes really really well for you and I look forward to following your journey oh well thank you so much I so appreciate you, you having me on and I think this is a wonderful podcast and so you know so great for you to share other people's stories so appreciate it thank you thank you very much you have an awesome rest of your day and we'll talk soon thank you